class of optimization problems where we can guarantee global optimality. When f is a convex function, and when the constraints involving g and h are convex sets, this is called a convex optimization problem. In the setting, we have strong duality. The optimal solution of the dual problem is the same as the optimal solution of the primal problem. The distinction between convex functions and convex sets are often not strictly presented in machine learning literature, but one can often infer the implied meaning from the context. Here's a definition. A set C is called convex if for any x and y in C, and for any scalar theta between 0 and 1, we have theta x plus 1 minus theta y is in set C. Convex sets are such that a straight line connecting any two elements of the set strictly lies inside the set. Convex functions, on the other hand, are functions such that the straight line between any two points of the function lie above the function. So a definition. A function f from rd to r is a convex function if for any x and y in the domain of f, and for any scalar theta between 0 and 1, we have f of theta x plus 1 minus theta y is less than or equal to theta f of x plus 1 minus theta f of y. A concave function is the negative of a convex function. In fact, if a function f from Rn to R is differentiable, then we can specify convexity in terms of its gradient. A function f is convex if and only if, for any two points, x and y, we have that f of y is greater than or equal to f of x plus the gradient of f of x transpose times y minus x. We further know that a function f of x, if the function f of x is twice differentiable, that is, the Haitian matrix exists for all values in the domain of, of the function, then the function f is convex if and only if the second derivative of f is positive semi-definite. In this example, we consider f of x equals base 2 log of x times x. For x greater than 0, this function is convex. In order to prove convexity, we would need to show that f of theta a plus 1 minus theta b is less than or equal to theta f of a plus 1 minus, minus theta f of b. However, if we recall from the mean value theorem, we know that there's always a value c between a and b for which f prime of c is equal to f of b minus f of a equals b minus a. This implies that every secant line has a slope equal to a tangent line. If that tangent line is always below the curve, which it is in this case, that means that the secant line must always be above the curve. And that's the case here. We can check that a function, our set is convex from the first principles by recalling the definitions. In practice, we often rely on operations that preserve uh, convexity to check that a particular function is or is not convex. Although the details are, are quite different, this is again the idea of closure that we introduced when we studied vector spaces. As an example, we want to check that a non-negative weighted sum of convex functions is convex. Now observe that if f is convex and alpha is greater than zero, then the function alpha x is going to be convex as well. We can see this by simply multiplying alpha to both sides of the equation f of theta x plus 1 minus theta y is less than or equal to theta f of x plus 1 minus theta f of y. 
Note that the non-negative alpha doesn't change this inequality. Now, if f1 and f2 are convex functions, then f1 of theta x plus 1 minus theta y is less or equal to theta f1 of x plus 1 minus theta f1 of y, and f2 of theta x plus 1 minus theta y is less than or equal to theta f2 of x plus 1 minus theta f2 of y. Therefore, summing the previous two functions, we get f1 of theta x plus 1 minus theta y plus f2 of theta x plus 1 minus theta y is less than or equal to theta f1 of x plus 1 minus theta f1 of y plus theta f2 of x plus 1 minus theta f2 of y which happens to be equal to theta f1 of x plus f2 of y plus 1 minus theta f1 of x plus f2 of x. Combining these two facts, we can see that alpha f1 of x plus beta f2 of x will be convex for any alpha and beta that's greater than zero. This closure property can be extended using a similar argument for non-negative weighted sums of more than two convex functions. So in summary, a constrained optimization problem is called a convex optimization problem if the goal is to minimize f of x subject to the constraints gi of x less than or equal to zero, for one less than or equal to i less than or equal to m, and hj of x equals zero for one less or equal to j less or equal to n. Here the functions f of x and gi of x are all convex, and hj of x equals zero are convex sets. Next, we're gonna see an example of convex optimization called linear programming. Consider the special case when all the preceding functions are linear. Here, we want to minimize C transpose X subject to AX less than or equal to B, where A is an M by D dimensional real matrix, and B is an M dimensional vector. This is known as a linear programming problem. It has D variables and M linear constraints. Lagrangian, in this case, is given by L of X and lambda equals C transpose X plus lambda transpose AX minus B. Where the lambdas here are M dimension, an M dimensional real vector of non-negative Lagrange multipliers. This means that L of X and lambda by rearranging is equal to C plus A transpose lambda transpose times X minus lambda transpose B. Differentiating with respect to X and setting it equal to zero, we get that C plus A transpose lambda is equal to zero. Therefore, we can easily find the dual Lagrangian in this case, it's d of lambda equals negative lambda transpose b. We want to maximize the dual so the, prob the problem becomes maxim to maximize negative b transpose lambda subject to c plus a transpose lambda equals zero and lambda greater or equal to zero. This is also known as a linear program but with m variables. We have the choice of solving the primal or the dual program, depending on whether m or d is larger. Recall that d is the number of variables and m is the number of constraints in the primal linear program. Here's an example. We want to consider the problem of minimizing negative five, three transpose times x1, x2, subject to the matrix constraint two, two, two minus four, 
minus 2, 1, 0, minus 1, 0, 1, times x1, x2, less or equal to 33, 8, 5, negative 1, and 8. The objective function here is linear, and that results in these contour lines that we see uh, dotted. Constant set in standard form is translated in the legend. The optimal values must lie in the shaded feasible region as in and it's the optimal solution is actually shown as a star. In a general linear programming problem, the optimal solution is always going to be at the intersection of two corner points in the feasible region. So to find the optimal solution, all you need to do is lay out your various constraints and then check the intersection of each of the pair of lines that intersect within the feasible region. That concludes our look, our look at optimization. Hopefully you have a better understanding of how we might go about maximizing or minimizing problem in a machine learning context.